This is one of the saddest videos I had to make on this channel in over three and a half years uh, since I started it, but Byton, the brand that I fell in love with pretty much at the very unveiling that I attended about two and a half years ago and later became a brand ambassador for, and as you probably know, I followed this brand very closely. They have sponsored this channel for a while, but unfortunately, it looks like they are done. Byton is over. It's hard to get information about what's happening and what happened because they're located in China and they have laid off all of their employees in Europe and here in the United States. So essentially, I can't talk to any of my contacts because they are no longer the employees. And obviously, my contacts in China are not replying to me right now. Um, it looks like they officially they're saying that they are on a six month break in China, but it does look like is just a way to have this company shut down. Or there are some other theories of what's happening and we're gonna talk about it. I'm actually gonna bring in Tom Malogny, who is usually a contributor for our news segments at the end of the week, but he's been a big part of a group of journalists that's traveled with the brand for a while. As a matter of fact, he, he was one of the first uh, journalists to break the story. So he's gonna be here to give us some answers and maybe some uh, possible scenarios of what's been happening and we're gonna do it right now welcome to e4 electric your number one source for electric car scoop no matter how sad it is sometimes if you are interested in everything that's going on in the world of electric cars go ahead and click on that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything moving forward all right, so before I bring in Tom, uh, let me give you a quick overview of Byton. Uh, it was unveiled about two and a half years ago at CES. They've unveiled their SUV, which they later called Ambyte. And that was my very first trip as a YouTuber. At that time, I had my corporate job. So, you know, I went to Vegas. And, you know, when I saw the car, when I saw the big screen, I, I instantly fell in love. I, I, I became a number one fan almost right away. I should mention that when I go out there to these events and report back to you guys, I report on facts, right? The specs, you get to see the car, the interviews and so forth. One thing that you don't see is the personal relationships that I have developed behind the scenes, right? With the people who actually make these cars, make the software and just make these brands what they are. And with Byton, I made this amazing connections with almost all people that I've met, and you could see the passion for what they were doing, you know, from the engineers all the way to the executive staff and the CEO. I just felt that passion, and, and then what, that, that's what got me excited about this brand, and that's why I'm so sad to see this come to an end. The reason I got to know the Byton staff so well is because I traveled a lot with them to different events from Milan Design Week all the way to Nanjing, China to check out uh, their factory when it was just starting to be built and, and everywhere else uh, in, in, in between, even here in the Monterey Car Week and the LA Auto Show and so many other events. And, and, and I got to tell you, every single step of the way, I was impressed how on schedule they were how well they were executing the plan, right? They also unveiled a four-door sedan to, to go in production at some time after the Ambyte would go in production. So they weren't even a one uh, vehicle brand. And of course, the factory, right? That took a lot. I met the people who, who made the factory possible. You know, Mark uh, was, the, was the person who was leading uh, the efforts, he used to work for BMW, so it was very apparent he knew what he was doing. He now actually works for Nikola Motors and in charge of uh, their infrastructure there. So definitely a, a very, very capable people and the factory is ready, right? I mean, the factory is ready to go. I drove uh, along with Tom the pilot production car. This car was fully functioning, including the software. So as you can see, the journey was very much on time and the car was ready for production. This is what makes me kind of wonder what really happened there. This is quite unusual for, for any brand, for any startup to go this far, just about to produce the product and have closed their doors so suddenly. Usually investors who have already invested into the company come in and try to provide, you know, maybe bridge loans or, or smaller investment chunks. But in this case, all of a sudden it's quiet. 
All right, let's talk to the man who was one of the first journalists to break this story, the Inside EVs contributor and the contributor to this channel, Tom Malogny. All right, Tom, um, so I'm not hiding my surprise, but I'm wondering, are you surprised that a company that has a fully functional factory that's been producing you know, pilot cars, uh, the technology, uh, the engineers, the software, uh, the marketing, everything's in place, and they are done. Well, it looks like they're done. We don't know for sure, but uh, you know, it's a little surprising. I'm not blown away surprised. You know, we, we got hints of this a couple months ago when they laid, when they furloughed 500 of their employees. Uh, you know, the coronavirus, this is, this is really hurting companies and it's especially hard on startups. I know, and you know, everyone's obviously hurting, but I, out of all the startups that I thought would be a victim here, I never thought that Biden would be. So uh, why do you think now they seem to be done? Well, they're out of cash. You know, I, I, I don't have access to their books and neither do you. Um, you know, rumors uh, are swirling that they're four months behind on paying their employees and that the electricity was shut off in their Beijing, Shanghai offices, and also at their Nanjing factory. So, you know, there's something, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a simple uh, fact that they're running out of cash, Alex. Right, and, and I understand that. Uh, but normally when a startup makes it this far, the investors who have already invested a lot of money and, and obviously time, you know, either do a bridge loan or, or, or a smaller investment round just to keep them you know, basically to bring them to market and then see. Uh, and by the way, they also had tons of reservations as well, uh, free reservations, but still. Um, so you don't you don't think there is any kind of foul play here? You know, I don't know what's foul play. Maybe it's hard business, uh, you know, negotiations. Maybe maybe that's going to happen. Somebody's going to come in and and uh, and bail them out, but they want to take more a bigger piece of the pie. I, I you know. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. We haven't heard the last of Biden. Something's going to happen here. FAW or uh, someone is going to come in and and, uh, and and take control or make another investment. I don't think they're done. I, I think they're done in the form that we've come to know them. But, uh, you know, I think uh, keep an eye on this space over the next few months because they've got a lot of assets and someone's going to want that. And so do you think uh, that someone's going to take it over and there will be an Ambite car? Or do you think that whoever takes over is going to do something different? You know, I, I, I can't begin to predict that. Um, it, it's a shame if there isn't, because I thought it was a decent car. You and I both drove it. Um, and uh, it seems to be very close to to production. So it's it's sitting there and it's it's ready and there's a factory waiting to build it. So uh, it'd be unfortunate if it doesn't come to fruition, but you know, it wouldn't be the first time something like this happened. Now, one man that seems to seemed to know exactly what was going to happen about a year and a half ago, even uh, seemed to be the former uh, Biden CEO that, you know, we both got to know, uh, Karsten Breinfeld, who's now as uh, CEO of Faraday Future and a contributor to this channel as well. Now, I'm only relying on the leaked comments that were published in The Verge a while back, where Karsten has mentioned that he believed that uh, FAW and the Chinese government was, you know, having way too much control over the company. And he was afraid that they were going to get this company to the point where they have everything going on. And then they're going to just take over the factory and do something else with it. At that time, I thought it was crazy. Turns out that based on these leaked comments, which he said, you know, kind of tried to roll back a little and, and walk back, um, you know, turns out he is right. Uh, is this something that people should have seen coming? And do you really think that there might be an effort by a Chinese government to just basically kind of use this up as, as a way to maybe uh, uh, have their own brand like FAW take this over and, and keep going as a Chinese, uh, Chinese company? You know, it's so hard to say at this point. It, it's it certainly is a possibility, and you know those comments that uh, Karsten made back then, you know, are kind of looming large now. Uh, I, from what I understand, there was supposed to be off the record comments. 
He was upset that they were printed, um, but he didn't deny saying that. And, uh, you know, who would know better than what was going on than the CEO, someone who, one of the founders and someone who'd been with the company from the beginning and someone who had been in negotiations with, you know, FAW all along. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it, it's starting to look like, you know, what he had said uh, could very well be true. Yeah, and I'm sure he's not happy about being right about it because I'm sure he has some stake in it. And obviously it's, it was his baby at some point, but let's talk about just the bigger picture, okay? Um, an electric car startup that was promising, that had some funding, you had some really big names from the industry heading the project, including Karsten, who brought the i8 essentially to us and the i program. Uh, in at BMW is no longer. Is this um, how how bad of an impact is going to make on just a general public opinion about these electric cars and electric car startups and you know how viable they are? Because there are still people, despite everything that happened with Tesla, who believe that Tesla may go bankrupt even at this point. Do you think this is going to make a big impact on on the public opinion of uh, of electric cars and the newer startups? You know, I don't. I think that if they had actually made it to market and were selling cars and they had customers and then they went under, it would have made a, a lot bigger of an impact. Um, people know that new industries, new technologies, startups come and go all the time. And while Biden looked like that they were on solid ground and, and that they were doing something that was pretty good, uh, I, I think people that understand business know that they, this is what happens in business. You know, uh, more companies fail than succeed and uh, factor in this, this worldwide pandemic. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's, it's really not a huge surprise. I don't think they're going to be the last company um, to, uh, to, to that we lose, uh, last EV startup that we lose during these uh, difficult times. All right. Well, to me, it's definitely uh, um, an end of an era in some ways. And I think, you know, you and me might have not known each other as well or even become friends if it wasn't, I think, for Biden, because most of the time how we met and, and all of the events that we went to together were all, you know, when Biden brought us there to their event. So I'm definitely uh, um, it's a bittersweet, but definitely I would credit them for, you know, our uh, friendship and our relationship and you being part of uh, part of the E4 Electric family. Well, I, I appreciate that. And, you know, as you said, maybe maybe your followers don't really know. Biden, when they first started, they elected to uh, put together a small pool of electric vehicle journalists and influencers and took us around to all of their events. We went to China. We went to different places. And uh, so that's how uh, Alex and I got to uh, um, kind of know each other. And, uh, you know, uh, that's how we started this collaboration is me being a guest on his channel and uh, doing other things together. So in that regard, yeah, it was, uh, it was um, you know, a, a good thing that uh, Biden uh, came along because otherwise you and I probably wouldn't know each other too well. Yeah, well, definitely a sad day for me uh, and I think for the electric car industry, but life goes on and um, I will see you uh, for our regular segment at our news wrap up uh, this weekend. Very good. And just as a parting note, um, while I might be seem sounding cavalier about this, I am disappointed and really sorry for the Biden employees whom we got to know a lot of them. It's terrible when something like this happens, uh, you know, but you know, as I said, this happens. And, and I think the people that signed on know that, um, you know, it's a roll of the dice and, uh, you know, there's big payoff if things work out, but in many instances it doesn't. So I wish all the Biden uh, team the best of luck. I'm sure they'll all uh, land on their feet with other uh, companies sometime soon. As you can probably notice, uh, there are more questions right now than there are answers. I'm sure we'll have more information in the next few weeks and probably months, and I'll definitely keep you guys updated. But for now, it is definitely a sad day for everybody, not just for myself personally and as an electric car journalist, I think for the entire electric car community. This was an innovative brand that was going to bring a lot to the table, and it's very unfortunate that it's over. I do have to say that I do have a little bit of a hope that maybe another brand will take over this company, or at least the IP for this car, and we will see the Ambite 
come to production in one form or another i definitely would still love to own one i really was looking forward to having one in my driveway actually as soon as next year so but uh, you know we'll see what happens i'll definitely keep you updated let me know in the comment section what are your thoughts about it i know a lot of my audience are you know biden supporters and reservation holders let me know your thoughts looking forward to all of it other than that see you guys next time and remember to stay charged